let's say um, let's say we had a certain application where we wanted to use Tangent X, but we didn't actually want to calculate the exact value because it was a little cumbersome. We wanted something a little simpler in a polynomial form. If I wanted to go straight for the Maclaurin series for Tangent X, I could write out all its derivatives. And um, however, if you take the first derivative of tangent of x, it's going to give you secant squared of x, which is pretty ugly, and it's just going to get uglier from there as you take more derivatives. So that's not going to be a very efficient path. We may try and look it up in a table of Maclaurin series and see if we can find tangent of x in there. If you see this one, this is from Stewart, chapter 11, page 768. And we got inverse tangent of here, but uh, we don't have tangent, unfortunately. You'll notice, however, that we do have sine of x and cosine of x. And of course, we know that tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. So what we could do is actually use the Maclaurin series of sine of x and cosine of x to find a Maclaurin series for tangent of x. And that's what we'll do in this video. And we're going to do that using long division. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take these first three terms of sine of x. And I'm going to move them over here into our numerator for sine of x. And I'm only using those first three terms here because I'm just looking for the first three terms of tangent of x to get a sort of a decent approximation. So I'm only going to use the first three terms of sine of x and cosine of x. And so that's why I'm going to make sure and use this um, approximate sign here because like, this tangent of x is not going to be exactly it. It's just going to be approximate because we're only using the first three terms. And you'll notice when I brought this sine of x terms over here that I replaced this 3 factorial over here with a 6 and I replaced this 5 factorial which is just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 with the 120 over here because that's going to just help us simplify this as we work through it. Next thing I'm going to do is take the first three terms for cosine of x similarly and bring those here into our denominator. And notice again that I replaced the 2 factorial and the 4 factorial with 2 and 24. Let's go ahead and get rid of this here and make some room because we're going to need it for some long division. All right, so first thing we're going to do with our long division is take our dividend here, which is our numerator on top, and we're going to just go ahead and place that over here. And of course, we're going to divide that by our divisor, which in this case is our denominator. So we'll go ahead and take our denominator and make that our divisor up here. So this is the format we're going to use. And um, if this brings you back to elementary school, um, you're not alone. But hopefully that you've resurrected this technique since then. If not, what better time than now? So here we go. All right, so first thing we're going to do with long division is take our first term here, our x, and we're going to divide it by the first term in our divisor, this 1. So we get x up here on top, which is going to be the first term in our answer. And then we're, what we're going to go ahead and do is multiply this x by the 1, by this negative 1 half x squared, and by this 1 24th, x to the 4th, and, um, and put those down here. So x times 1 is just going to give us x. Our second term is going to be minus one half x cubed and our third term is going to be plus one twenty fourth x to the fifth now that we've uh, multiplied that out we can go ahead and subtract all of this in parentheses in the white from what's in the yellow does this look familiar yet so subtracting our x from our x we get zero and we're going to subtract negative one half from negative one six which is a little bit more cumbersome, so let's um, let's just kind of do that fraction on the side over here. So we have negative one sixth plus one half. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom here by three. So this is just gonna give us negative one sixth plus three sixths, which is going to be two sixths or one third. So we get one third x cubed. And next we're going to subtract 1 24th x to the 5th from 1 20th x to the 5th. And again, let's go ahead and write this out on the side just to be clear on how this process works. So 1, 1 20th minus 1 24th. We'll go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom here by 5. 
So we get 1 1 20th minus 5 1 20th, which is going to give us negative 4 1 20th, which is just negative 1 30th, which we'll go ahead and put up here. Okay, now that we've got our first remainder here, we're going to go ahead and divide the first term of our remainder by the first term of our divisor up here. So we just end up with one-third x cubed here on the top is our second term of our answer. And applying the same process, we're just going to go ahead and multiply each term by this one-third. So multiplying that first term, we just get one-third x cubed. The second term, we're going to get negative one-sixth x to the fifth. And that third term, we could multiply it out, but honestly it doesn't really matter because we're only looking for the first three terms here, and that's not going to matter. So we just say plus dot 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 and not worry about that. So we're going to go ahead and subtract again. Subtracting this first term, we get zero, which is nice, which of course that's why we picked one third up here, any, of course, so, they, so this would cancel out. Next term, a um, little more complicated, we have negative one thirtieth minus negative one-sixth, which of course is just plus one-sixth. Now we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by five. So this is going to be equal to negative one-thirtieth plus five-thirtieths, which is going to equal four-thirtieths, also known as two-fifteenths, if you want to simplify it a bit. So we get two-fifteenths x to the fifth over here. And, and then there's this, there's this last term here, which of course is not going to matter. So we're getting close, making some progress. Let's go ahead and clear this out a little bit. And for, to find our last term up here, we just go ahead and divide our remainder by the first term in our divisor, which is 1. And we end up with 2 fifteenths in the top. Of course, if we multiply that 2 fifteenths by 1, we get 2 fifteenths down here, and subtracting that, we end up with 0, which validates that these first three terms are the correct first three terms uh, for our approximation for tangent of x. However, before we claim victory on this, let's go ahead and plot it out and make sure it matches up. All right, so having brought Desmos up, let's go ahead and plot out tangent of x in black here, the function shown here by our black line. Now let's go ahead and plot, on top of that, our function we just came up with, which was x plus one-third x to the third plus two-fifteenths x to the fifth. And let's change this over here to, to dotted so we can see that where how it overlaps. And you can see it actually did pretty good. It's overlapping pretty well here as you get close to zero. As you get further away from zero, you can see it's um, the orange dots are detouring a little bit from the black line meaning we're introducing a little bit of error. But hey, if I'm, if I'm we're operating in a region close to zero, I'm an engineer, maybe this approximation is good enough. And this approximation here, this polynomial is probably a, a lot easier to deal with than tangent of x. So that's sort of the idea on how Maclaurin series can be very useful. And, um, and having shown these plots match up well, let's go ahead and claim victory and box in our answer up here for tangent of x. And again, this is an example of how you can manipulate Maclaurin series to perform division, and in this case, find other Maclaurin series without having to take ugly derivatives to find them.